Well guys, today is November the 27th and uh, we're kind of on the home stretch with these pigs back here. I mentioned on a previous video that I wasn't able to get a butcher date until December the 20th, probably because of all the deer that my processor is working on right now. And that's way longer than I really wanted to keep them. So I've kind of had them on a maintenance type feeding regimen for a while. Um, I've shown in previous videos the open feeder, the free choice feeder that I built uh, that works pretty good, except these pigs back here can empty that 300 pound feeder in four days or so. So that was not at all sustainable. So I had to kind of scale back since I'm keeping them longer. So that has resulted in extremely slow growth because I've just been giving them maybe 30, 30 to 35 pounds per day, which is just kind of enough to put on a little weight, but mostly just maintain them. But starting today, I'm up in their rations to 44 pounds a day. That's just over eight pounds per pig per day. So I'm thinking that's gonna help them pack on a few more pounds between now and December the 20th. Um, but we do have a change of plans on one of our other pigs. Let me show you. You see this spotted pig behind us. This is Rooster. This was going to be our breeding boar, our boar that we were going to mate up to Sue right over here. And it's very possible that they have made it up. I don't know what Sue's status is. But anyway, we were going to have like a breeding program here. I was going to sell piglets. We we're going to have kind of a whole thing going on. But plans have changed. Lots of plans have changed recently. And I will address some of that on a later video but the point of this video right now is to get rooster here into the freezer and this is going to be the first pig that I have processed by myself uh, so we're going to see how it goes I'm going to film what I can and try not to make it too gory because YouTube and uh, gory stuff they, they'll demonetize if I don't be careful so anyway if anybody is not interested in seeing a pig butchered I won't show the goriest stuff of course but if you're not interested it may be time to find a different video to watch right about now but we do have a lot of stuff to set up before we do that we need to get a butchering station need to get a scalding kettle because i'm going to try my best to scrape this pig and save the skin so i can have pork skins um, but anyway yeah let's start getting stuff set up so we can get rooster here in the freezer all right so i have an idea on how to set up the scalding barrel and it involves first cutting this pipe in half so instead of explaining the whole thing let's just go ahead and do it step by step and uh, hopefully it'll work i seem to remember from elementary school a way to find the midpoint of objects just with your hand so uh, I'm gonna give that a shot here hopefully it'll work with this there that should be the mm -hmm. midpoint mm -hmm. let's see how that old trick worked that is pretty close. Next, I'm gonna take the bucket on my tractor and dig kind of a trench in the ground. Next, I'm gonna put these tubes, it's not quite level, but y'all get the picture. I'll fix it in a minute. Put these tubes across the ground and then put the barrel on top of these tubes and build the fire up under in the ground. And I think the draft, between the hole's really wide, so I'm thinking there'll be a good enough draft to keep airflow. But let's fix it a little bit, put the barrel on and see what happens. What you think, man? Pretty good. Pretty good. So y'all can tell it's getting dark, so this is probably gonna be the last thing for the day, but uh, this is really actually very, very strong. So this side and the other side are both on top of the hard ground that I did not dig into. So very, very strong there. It's not totally level, but that should be okay. And I seem to have a good bit of space to get a fire going up under there. So I think this will work. Who's in the hole? Near cat. 
Well, that's it for this project for today. It's getting dark and I'm about to grill some pork chops for supper, so I'm pretty excited about that. That's about my favorite thing. Um, I fed Rooster, the boar that's about to go in the barrel there, for the last time uh, about an hour or so ago. It's 5.30 in the afternoon and I'm going to try to do all this around 4ish tomorrow and I'm hoping that leaving him unfed will make it to where he's a little bit cleaner on the inside. That's what I do with the chickens before I butcher them. I don't feed them for like 24 hours and they're very clean on the inside so I'm hoping that'll translate to a pig as well so we'll pick this back up in the morning not appear to have any pinholes in it which is great this barrel's kind of small i had a much larger barrel but it had pinholes in the bottom so i don't think it's going to work i'm just gonna have to make this one work So I'm ready to start the fire at this point and I'm going to start out with a uh, bucket of coals here already lit and hot coals that'll give me a head start and a ready-made bed of coals up under here because this is not the driest wood these are sawmill off cuts and they're not that old this will just help it burn better I'm starting to get that feeling that people tend to get when they start a process that's way, way over their head. Yeah, that's how I feel right now. I am curious as to how long this takes. It's 1.48 right now in the afternoon and our water temperature is just over 50 degrees, maybe 55 degrees. getting much warmer let's see what the temperature is looking like all right right now it is 212 and the water temperature is at 75 degrees so it's increased about 30 degrees in a little less than 30 minutes so um, a degree a minute I think that's pretty good the goal is to get it to 150 degrees so if it continues to increase at this rate I think we're looking at another 60 or 70 minutes it's 309 right now let's check on our water temperature looks like our help just arrived Scalding tub. Scalding tub. 100, 135. Is that what it's got to be? 15 degrees to go. You got a lot of water in there. It's too much. I'm going to take some of it out because <laughs> it's going to go over the side. That's right. And put the fire out. <laughs> yeah, once it gets to maybe 140, we can probably go ahead and shoot the thing. Well, guys, we're just about at 150 on the water. Uh, YouTube is not real friendly to the killing of animals like this, so I'm just going to go do it. We'll bring the pig, and I'll see you all in a few minutes.
Well guys, here he is. This is the fruit of our labors, uh, about three hours worth of labor as a matter of fact. And I unfortunately was not able to film a whole lot of it or any of it basically. Um, but that probably works out in my favor because YouTube's not always super friendly towards butchering videos. So uh, sadly, I don't have a whole lot of footage for y'all during that whole process. It was kind of gory anyways. But I did get a good kill on Rooster, one single shot. I was able to st uh, stick the jugular and drain out some of the blood. Uh, the scalding process was a little bit shaky because Rooster is way bigger than I expected by about 100 pounds and I didn't get the greatest scald, had to pour pans of water or pots of water on the spots that didn't quite get into the barrel and then we scraped and scraped and scraped and poured more water on and scraped and scraped and scraped. And as you can see there's still hair left over. I had had the idea of uh, scraping all the hair out, cutting the skin off, and making pork skins, but I don't think that's going to happen. There's a fair amount of hair left on this pig, so probably just going to skin it in the morning and, uh, and go from there. But all things considered, uh, we've got a ton of meat here, lots more than I expected, and in the morning we'll pick this back up and let this pig chill overnight. It's supposed to be about 27 tonight, so I think we'll be okay there. I'm going to cover it up with something and then make sure my, uh, my loader will stay up overnight. I'll jam a 2x4 up under it or something. And then cover the pig up and we'll pick this back up in the morning. Well, good morning, guys. It is about 6.45 in the morning and it is time to get this accomplished, get this finished here. And I am going to skin this thing. Maybe, maybe I'll be able to save some of the skin. I really don't know. Tons of hair in it still, but I just want to get down to the meat. So let's do that. So I'm definitely not a pro at this. And there's going to be places in here where there's still some chunks of meat kind of attached to, I guess, where I didn't get a very good... Uh, didn't get quite in the right place to take off the skin, but that meat right there I'm just putting in a pot over here and I'll use that to grind up. What are you here for? You here for breakfast? Guys, I really feel like I'm not in the right spot here because I've got the layer of skin right here, but then there's a very thin layer of muscle. There's like layers and layers of muscle here. If you see that layer, and then there's that inner layer, which I think would be the belly meat right here. But I'm just, I feel like I'm just wasting a ton of meat right here that's kind of attached to the skin, but I don't, I'm really not sure what to do about that because, I mean, let me see if I can kind of peel it off here, I don't know. Yeah, so I kind of am able to peel it off to some degree, but I'm kind of getting into the hair follicles as well. I don't know if y'all can see that, but there's some, there's some black uh, bases of the hairs I guess you could say down in the follicle still and that's the kind of the extent of it I really don't want to grind up those hairs um, but at the same time I know there's a bunch of meat just kind of that thin on this layer I don't I don't know y'all let me know if there's anybody who has experience with this is this a is this layer supposed to go into the grind or is it a piece of the is it part of the belly meat i really don't know in other places though there's just simply a layer of fat on the inside of the skin so it's not everywhere that that's happening so on this other side i've kind of been able to correct myself a little bit and not shave off all of that meat with the skin over here still getting some but it's not quite as bad as the other side i'm just trying to keep it to the skin and not take that meat with it because the main thing that we're going to use is grind ground meat we may make some sausage but we use a lot of ground meat for burgers and spaghetti and lasagna that kind of thing so a good bit of this pig is going to be ground up we'll save some chops and some ribs and belly for bacon and boston butt that kind of thing but the hams are going to ground and whatever else I can get. I hope there's not any pros watching this because this is a mess.
I've draped most of the skin over my, this is my gut bucket here, but I won't show you what's on the inside of this bucket. Uh, so this is the majority of the skin here and you can kind of see right here that uh, there is some meat left on these skins but really not a ton uh, really not a ton so i don't think i lost ugh. actually that's a that's a fairly big chunk right there but i think that's the biggest chunk but yeah you can see that most of this is fat and it's kind of a thin kind of a thinner layer of fat i don't think i've lost a whole lot right here and here's what we're left with here it is <laughs> it's pretty rough look at all the little cut marks in this thing it's just sliced up all to pieces but i don't think it's going to matter that much i think it looks pretty decent all right so at this point i've got both halves of this pig independently suspended so they've each got their own strap or chain or whatever i was able to conjure up to put up here and i'm going to split the pig down the middle right in half That went pretty good until I got kind of to the bottom there and then the blade kind of got off sides, but I, it, I think it's fine. Okay. Got it. I want this nasty hoof off first. All right, now I feel like I'm making some more progress. Uh, the first thing that I wanna do is remove this leaf lard right here. Uh, apparently this is about the highest quality lard that you can get out of a pig and I wanna take it out. Uh, we are unlikely to use it ourselves, but my mom probably will, uh, pie crusts and that kind of thing. There we go. Next thing I want to attempt to do is get this ham off of here and this will be ground up for us, either for sausage or for just ground meat. Oh, I'm not real sure where to start here. I do have a handy dandy diagram though. And I kind of feel the joint right down in there. I'm hoping I can get through the joint without having to saw on it. Ooh, goodness. There we go. And there's our ham. And possibly some more. I really don't know. <laughs> now I think I want to flip it over. Oh, it's still heavy. Oh, my goodness. And to see if I can get the Boston butt out of here. Maybe I'll get the pork shoulder off first. I'm trying to just kind of find the muscle lines here. You can kind of see, of course, where those lines are. I just realized my diagram has got the pig flipped. Uh. He's heavy. There it is. He ain't but half a hog here. Yeah, well, I got another third right here. <laughs> I don't have any idea what I'm doing. So, okay. here's, don't ask me. There, there's a ham and a shoulder. Okay. And I'm about to attempt to get the belly out of here, the pork belly. And I've got a diagram. <laughs> Good. For what that's worth. All right, so this, I think this is the pork belly. This is the Boston butt, but I don't know how to get it out. And this is the loin. Don't matter how you get that, you'll eat it anyhow. So I guess that's true. All right, guys, I fought long and hard, but I got something out that kind of resembles a Boston butt. I, I don't know if it is or not, but I think when I smoke it, it'll be fine.
So at this point, I've got the tenderloin mostly detached here, but it's still attached to this part, which I think is, by my diagram, appears to be the roast. Uh, I'm not totally sure what this part is. It looks kind of like a tenderloin. Uh, I'm not really sure. I'll probably end up saving the chops and just grinding this part up so it doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, I think that's what you would call a roast of some sort. Looks nice. All right, let's see what's inside of here. I'm thinking center cut pork chops. Really don't know. My diagram says it's center cut pork chops. Yeah, that's a pork chop. I think that's what you would call a center cut pork chop right there. Not bad, not a lot of fat, unfortunately. Some, not, not a lot though. Probably because I may have removed a bunch with the skin. Well, there's some right here. There's more right here, actually. All right, the chops are packaged up, and at this point, I still want to get this these uh, this pork belly or side meat or whatever it is off of these ribs, and there's a fair amount of meat in front of these ribs as well. All right, so here's our rack of ribs with the pork belly still attached to it and I want to separate those out. I suppose I could leave it all together and make just an incredible <laughs> incredible rack of ribs at some point, but I don't know that I want to do that. I honestly don't even know what cut of meat this is. That is not gonna be any good for bacon. I don't know if the fact that I pulled a lot of some of the meat off when I was taking the skin off was a factor there. Uh, I really don't know. But at this point, here's our rack of ribs. And I'm going to leave this intact. I'll smoke this whole rack just like it is. Ribs are one of our favorite things. And honestly, I'm not super, super worried about not getting the pork belly like I wanted it. That's just not a huge concern for me. Um, certainly, I like bacon, but it's not, a, it's not a big deal. We're big fans of ribs, however. And uh, this, with all this extra meat, uh, will make some excellent, excellent, excellent eating for smoked ribs and whatever this thing is, is going to the grinder. Now at this point, what I'm left with is basically a big chunk of neck meat. So there is the neck right there, and there's just gobs and gobs of meat on uh, on this part, and I don't really know. Uh, I don't really know if there's like a proper cut of meat on this anywhere, but what I'm gonna do with this is just just separate it all out and uh, and grind it up. It kind of looks like, so there's like a shoulder blade right here. Maybe this is the shoulder. Uh, it would probably, actually it would probably do extremely well just to keep as a uh, big chunk and leave it and use it for barbecue. I may just do that. I'm not gonna make y'all suffer through this other half. All right, let's check out our results here. So that second half of the pig was actually more difficult than the first. I figured I would get some practice in on the first one and then the next one would go a lot smoother. It did not turn out that way. So what we have here is 143 pounds of meat. These two coolers have Boston butts, hams, shoulders, ribs, that kind of thing in them, pretty much full. This one right here has got just chunks of uh, meat so that it, I can grind them up, uh, up to about right here or so. And these have got packaged pork chops, loin chops, whatever these things were in here, ready for the freezer. The weight of all of this stuff, once you consider the weight of the containers and take that away, is 143 pounds. So 143 pounds of meat out of a pig that I only thought weighed 150 pounds seems pretty good to me. Of course, once I cut meat off of those hams and start grinding stuff up, I'm going to lose a lot in bone weight. But still, I think that's pretty respectable. I also have some lard right here. I'm going to try to do something with that and I also have this leaf lard that I'm gonna do something with as well. So those are our results and 
here in a little bit we'll start grinding some of this up. All right, another change of plans here. So today what I'm gonna do is take the large cuts of meat and get them wrapped and thrown in the freezer and the other stuff that's gonna be ground up, we'll let those rest in the refrigerator overnight and we'll do the grinding tomorrow. So I'm gonna be using just plain old freezer paper to wrap these larger cuts of meat. And I was just at the store and got this, never used it before, and turns out it requires freezer tape to uh, to work properly. I did not get any freezer tape because I didn't know about that. So packing tape it is. So this first unrecognizable cut of meat I think came off of uh, shoulder area somewhere along in there anyway I figured it would be a good piece of meat just to put on the smoker and uh, make pulled pork out of You ever see on the news where people get caught on the highway transporting drugs and the police are in the back pulling packages out of the trunk? So I'm labeling these by the pig's name and the date, which may make it confusing. Rooster Ribs, 2023. So I think this right here is the only belly meat that I got, if indeed it is belly meat, and it's quite thin, and I, I guess that's probably because I yanked some of the, some of the meat off when I was trying to, uh, when I was trying to get the skin off. I don't know. I'm probably gonna just find some kind of a recipe for pork belly that's not bacon because that is quite thin and probably not worth making bacon out of. Plus, there's a lot of really good non-bacon belly recipes that I'd like to try. So here's what I ended up with. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven packages of meat here. There's two half racks of ribs, one full rack, two Boston butts, one chunk of meat that might be a pork belly. I don't know. Uh, and I think, I think that there's a shoulder right here as well. Lots of other meat left in the coolers. I'm going to go put this stuff in the freezer real quick and then I'm going to get that stuff in the refrigerator and tomorrow morning we'll start grinding it up. Well guys, it's the next morning at this point and what I want to do now is take all these hams and shoulders and all of this stuff that I've got left over here and get all of the meat as much as I can at least off of these bones. Then I'm gonna grind it all up in just a big bulk bucket probably. And then I'm gonna take it in the house and get it sealed up. I may even play around with some sausage at some point, we'll see. But the first step is to get it all ground up. So I guess the best way really to get all this meat off of the bone is I guess cut down and find the bone down there. Maybe between the bones. Oh yeah, that'll work. Um, and this meat has been hanging out in the refrigerator overnight. So it is good and cold. I wish that it was just a little bit frozen, but we're not gonna have that luxury, which is fine. And it's very cold out here again this morning. So pretty good conditions for this, I feel like. That right there is just one huge boneless chunk of meat and we'll cube these up and get them in smaller pieces for the grinder. Well guys, we are finally getting to the end of this whole uh, kind of a painstaking and tedious process here. So what are my takeaways? What have I learned here? Well, I've learned a few things, but I think, I think the main thing that I have learned is that this is, this is really fulfilling. Uh, even though it has been a, a lot of effort, even though it has been somewhat frustrating at times and it has been very time consuming, it's still very, very satisfying to know that I raised the pig, fed the pig, gave it a good place to stay, killed it in a very humane way, and now I'm processing it and now my family will get to eat it. I mean, how much more connected to your food source can you be? I think that is really, really cool. So. It's been very satisfying <clears throat> and I don't regret doing it. I'm definitely gonna do it again. 
Uh, the second thing that I have learned is that you can save a ton of money by doing this yourself. Now, of course, you have to balance that with the time spent doing it, of course, but my butcher probably would have charged $300 for something like this and definitely worth that cost. Take it in, come back two days later and get nice vacuum seal packages. Very, very convenient, right? So I think that cost is probably worth it, but at the same time, that could possibly double your cost, input cost on the pig, and that might be prohibitive. So you can save a lot of money doing it yourself. Third thing that I have learned is that pigs, I'm about out of room in my, in my pan here. I got another one though. Um, pigs are very forgiving as far as the cuts of meat go. My son's out there on his little toy tractor. Pigs are very forgiving as far as these cuts of meat. So I know that most of y'all have probably watched butchering channels on YouTube, Bearded Butchers, uh, there's a whole pile of them really. And more the cuts of meat that they get out of those pigs looks like something you would see at the grocery store, right? Very clean, very pretty, very symmetrical, very nice looking, very much opposite of what I have done here. Now, having said that, it doesn't matter. The stuff that I got out of this pig, it was ugly. Um, didn't get the right cuts, lost a lot of the belly. Uh, doesn't matter. My family is still gonna eat this meat and it's just not gonna be as pretty as it was. We've still got Boston butts to smoke. We've still got pork chops to eat. We've still got tons and tons of ground meat that we're gonna be grinding here in just a few minutes that we'll be able to use for spaghetti, lasagna, hamburgers, whatever. It's all right. It's all right that it's ugly, right? Um, I was watching just a few acres farm and watching him cut up a pig. And one of the commenters on one of his videos said, there's just no wrong way to cut up a pig. It's just whatever you want out of the pig, that's what you can get. And that's why I say that pigs seem to be very forgiving animals as far as that goes. Everything I've done here is ugly, but man, we're gonna eat and it's gonna be great. Also learn that cold meat on a cold morning will really make your hand hurt. So here's the meat that we ended up with. This little tub right here is overflowing with meat and this tub right here is maybe three quarters of the way full or so with meat. And here's my grinding setup here. I've got my Vivor grinder right here and I've got a food grade bucket down below right here. And I'm just gonna grind all of the meat into this bucket and then package the meat later. Once we finish grinding all of this meat, we'll get a weight on it as well. Guys, we have finally reached the end of this long and tedious process, and this is the ground that we ended up with in this bucket. And I did take into consideration the weight of the containers, but in this bucket, we've got 40 pounds of ground meat, a five gallon bucket full of meat, which is great. And in this container, we've got 18 pounds of the ground meat. And I'm gonna fool around with some sausage on this too, I think. And got a lot of vacuum sealing ahead of me, but I'm not gonna film all that because I think y'all pretty well get the picture. Um, I'm probably going to get some questions in the comments about organ meat, like hearts, livers, kidneys, I suppose. I'm not sure what all is edible in there. Uh, pig ears, feet, all of that stuff. I think that's a cultural thing, and that's not something that we would eat here, so there was no point in me fooling around with that stuff. Uh, the only thing that I really wished that I had off of the pig was the head cleaned up and smoked. I think maybe I'll try that on the next pig because I know that you can take those heads and get them good and clean, put them on the smoker and just smoke the whole thing and then pick the meat off. And that's something that I would really like to try to do. So maybe on the next one. Um, the grinder here, if anybody is interested in information, on information about this grinder, Vivor sent me this grinder earlier this year. And I do have a video out there where I grind chicken meat with it. But I'll put information on it down in the description of this video if anybody is interested. And um, it did, 
this 58 pounds of meat in about 30 minutes. So we're looking at what a pound, what is that, a pound, YouTube math never works out. A pound every 30 seconds, I guess that's it. So two pounds a minute, so that seems pretty great to me. So if anybody's interested in that, I'll put info about that. Well guys, thank y'all so much for joining me on this, uh, this rocky journey of processing my own pig. Um, this will not be the last pig that I process here. I don't know if I'll be able to video the next one, but uh, anyway, it's been interesting and it's been very satisfying and I'm glad that I did it. I'm glad that y'all watched and I'll see y'all on the next one.